What's up guys? I am not banana and in this video we're just gonna go over how to get the new exotic class item because these are available in Destiny 2 and they don't really tell you in game directly how to get to this. So I'm just gonna show you how to unlock the new dual destiny mission and then generally how to do the mission. If this helps you out, really appreciate a subscription. To unlock the mission, you're going to have to go to the Pale Heart, and you're going to have to do Overthrow in all three of the zones. You're going to have to do it in the Landing, the Blooming, and the Impasse. Once you beat the Tier 4 boss of the Overthrow, you're going to see a message in chat once the dialogue ends, and it's going to say that there is a Secret Keeper of Sabathun that spawns nearby. They're going to spawn in the same spot every single time, and you're just going to run over there and kill a Wizard and finish their Ghost, and then you're going to move on to the next area. Once you've finished all three zones, you're going to see a big green beam in the sky that's going to be over the refraction zone. Uh, right now, I don't have any footage of that because I already did the big green beam. But basically, you're just going to go over this way and climb up into here. And once you get into the refraction, you should see like two symbols that are going to pop up on your screen. You basically go over there, you kill two subjugators or you weaken two subjugators and they're going to drop these balls and you bring the balls back to the refraction spot over here. And the mission should have its start beacon right here. This is going to be dual destiny and this is where you're going to get the class item from. So you just need to bring the two balls from the subjugators that only spawn once you have killed all three of the wizards in the different zones. And once you get here, you can start the mission, but you do need a friend to do this. You can only start this as a two man fire team. You can't do it solo, can't do it with three people. It's just two. So you and your best friend, you're going to be grinding for a while with this mission. Once you get into the mission, you're going to see that one of you has a light aligned buff and the other person has a darkness aligned buff. And this is going to change the enemies and the plates that you're going to stand on during the mission. The first part is kind of you just running around and stepping on some plates as you're getting into an area. It's pretty simple. Most of these plates are pretty easy to find, so I'm not going to give you exact spots on where to go here. But the light aligned person stands on the light plate, the dark aligned person stands on the dark plate, and then it should open barriers and you you should be able to just progress through slowly but surely then you're going to get into a room that is going to have a dark plate above and a light plate below and this is where you're going to start needing to call some stuff out because you're going to have the light player seeing some symbols in this first room and the darkness player is going to see symbols to shoot these are going to be the symbols from vow of the disciple they're pretty uh easy to just call out if you know vow call outs if you don't know them i'm sure that you'll find a way to describe them to the person but you're going to want to tell them the symbols and which order you see them in so that the darkness person will then be able to shoot the two symbols in order to actually see the symbols you're going to have to kill your respective enemy there is a darkness knight and then there is a light centurion that need to be killed and then they drop motes of light that are going to give you the ability to see the stuff it's either motes of light or motes of darkness depending on what you're doing in this footage you're going to see i pick up a mode of light and then i will be able to see a symbol right next to me and i would just call out that my friend needs to shoot knowledge and then you spawn a second guy and you say hey you got to shoot whatever the next symbol is and your friend up top is then going to see these splinters he shoots those in the right order and then you get teleported to the next room in the next room your jobs are going to be reversed there's going to be three call outs to be made but it's still going to be the exact same thing you're going to just be shooting them in the order that the person tells you and it's going to be simple and then you're going to get teleported to another room where the jobs are flipped back to what they were in the first room four call outs shoot the symbols in the right order and then you should be done with this section of the mission the next area is going to be a jumping puzzle that just starts out like a normal jumping puzzle but then ends up using the plates where you're going to have to stand on the correct ones in order to progress through the jumping puzzle. It's still a very simple area so I'm not going to give you exact guides on where every plate is. I'm sure that you'll be able to find it once you get in here. But once you get done with this section you're on to the next actual encounter. The next room has this radial clock like structure at the back and you're going to see different beams connected to the center and you're going to have to call out which ones you see connected to the center to your friend so there's going to be nine of these in this room and generally what we are doing is just having someone read off all the ones that they have connected and then the second person would then say okay so i also have and there would be three that are matching and once you know the three that are matching you kill a tormentor in the center and then you shoot the three that you guys have matching together 
and you just need to do that three different times. So you just need to read out the exact ones that you have connected and then figure out the matching ones, shoot them. It's a pretty easy encounter once you actually know what's up, but this is why you're gonna have to be in a voice chat because you're calling this out while you're in combat with a lot of different husks, grims, you know, tormentors are spawning. So you gotta make sure that you're able to talk with your teammates, say which ones you have and move on from here once you shoot those three. Getting to the next encounter is just a simple like jumping part using this plates that you're standing on. You got to kill a little bit of ads and like some tormentors at the end, but nothing complicated here. It's literally just killing enemies and standing on the very obvious plates in this section. And then you're going to get into the final boss room where you're fighting the two subjugators that you were fighting to get into the mission. These guys are going to involve all the mechanics that we've learned thus far. Firstly, you're going to have the symbols from the first part, the way that you're going to get there is just by DPSing the boss and then killing these wizards. One's going to be light, one's going to be dark. Obviously, the light person kills the light, dark kills the dark. And then you're going to see three symbols, read them top down to the person. They shoot those three symbols and then you get back to damaging. Then you're going to have to damage the other guy because the other guy's shield will go down and you should have to do symbols again. So it's going to be reverse jobs, pretty easy once again there. And then you're going to get to a part where you're going to have that radio looking clock thing again and this one is different than the last encounter that we used it because you're going to see two different radial clock things and they're going to have four things that are connected what one person is going to read off the four that they have connected and then one of them is going to be matching on the other person's clock you do have to be fast on this one though because it does rotate between different matching ones and different combinations because you, they don't want you to just sit there forever this is why you for sure 100% need to be in a voice chat because that person needs to shoot the symbol kind of fast and then you need to shoot the same one as well once they tell you which one they shot so if you have like one four 13 and 14 connected and then they have four six nine and 12 connected you'd both shoot four and then you just need to do that three times in order for the shields to go back down and you kill the bosses there is one last part involved in this mission before you get the class item but i feel like it'd be more fun for you to go in and figure that out yourself and have fun with that i don't really want to spoil it because it is just an enjoyable part that ha has no mechanics involved in it but that's going to be the mission that's going to be how you're going to farm the exotic class item our first clear took us 40 minutes because we we're figuring this all out on our own but i'm sure we can cut that time down and you should be able to farm this pretty fast especially if you're running with the same person every time you and your friend are going to get a real nice bond going because you're going to be running this mission to try and get those random rolls of the exotic class item. Hope this video helped you out. I'll talk to you in the next one. Goodbye.